Well, hey, Menorcan Navy, welcome back to the channel. And today we've got a video that we're going to put out, and we're going to call this Death of a Shrimp Boat. I would like to introduce you to the Miss Jeanette. She was born in Louisiana, and uh, you kind of tell that she was originally designed as an inland boat because of how flat the bottom of the hull is. Originally, this boat was constructed as a skimmer boat, and it would have been used in the bayous and backwaters of uh, Louisiana and their stripping industry there. But she made her way over to the East Coast and ended up in Georgia uh, as a trawler. And the, the boat uh, was very useful in shallow water and did its service. Uh, the owner fell ill, he died, and the boat just kind of fell into a state of disrepair until the dock kind of acquired ownership of it. And it was originally going to be planned to be an offshore reef. But after uh, some issues developed uh, because the owner had passed away, uh, the uh, plan to uh, put it in the offshore reef program was scuttled and the responsible thing to do is to dismantle the boat. Now this is when we originally kind of met up with the Miss Jeanette. Uh, you can see the nozzle is still there in where the propeller would have been area. And you can tell by the marine growth that she hasn't been up for a while. At this time she was put up uh, because she had developed a leak and had to be patched. And uh, you can see that they had already kind of started making some uh, start on the uh, boat by removing the outriggers and the boom. And that was part of the offshore uh, program uh, in order for it to get in that program. All the, anything that a diver could become entangled in had to be removed. And of course the engine had to come out. And that process was uh, used with uh, with crane. Um, looks like they had a Cummins in it. Um, and uh, marine transmission, both those units were brought out. And they... They had moved on and were uh, utilized in uh, another application. So that part is good. That engine continued to live on and is helping somebody else now. The engine and the transmission were in pretty, pretty good shape. And they had more life in them and uh, of course they were used, used again. see here uh, the rigging still in place uh, the exhaust was still in place and all this stuff had to be removed for the uh, reef project and we see the boat here now this was part of uh, still in preparation and anticipating its sinking off the Georgia coast as a reef you see they've taken the nozzle off of it here uh, that is a a usable piece and then uh, the rigging had been cut off of it. Well here a, a recycle trailer has shown up. Uh, the decision was made that the, since the reef project was was, was a no-go to go ahead and scrap the boat. When we take a fly around they put the boat up on the railway. You can see the front very front part of the wheelhouse was removed and this thing was just cut up in, into manageable pieces with a large crane. Um, that was getting the, getting the wheelhouse cut off of it. And then uh, they systematically started working on it with the torches. Now at this point in the operation, the fuel tanks had already been removed as well. And all that's pretty much left of this boat is the steel that comprised the hull and the, the structure part of it and the wheelhouse. It doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot of torch work that's required to get this 
thing cut up into manageable pieces. That process developed over, uh, I guess, a, a period of about a week. Been working on it, and they would cut it, cut through um, a lot of the uh, structural pieces of it, but leave a little bit intact until they uh, got the crane on site, and then they would finish cutting those pieces. And then, well, you can get to see that here coming up here. This is part of that operation, going in and cutting out the areas where they had to get into kind of section this hold up. Now there was a bit of concrete that was in the hull and it was used for ballast and for insulation purposes in the ice hole. And there's some of that that is still left. You see that's going to be another piece piece of the puzzle is breaking that up. Uh, getting the concrete off of it so that they can uh, send the steel off for scrap. You can see the, the trailer's beginning to get a little bit of debris in it as part of that boat's making its way onto the scrap trailer. And once the crews had completed sectioning the, sh the shrimp boat up into the pieces they could manage, they brought the crane in and they started to fly the, the sections over and put them onto uh, the ground where they could systematically attack them. Uh, they cut them in pieces that would go into the trailer for the trip over to uh, the scrapyard. You can see they, they got the bow section off. And uh, I guess you want to call that the midsection. The, the aft pieces, two pieces there, were were still on the on the cradle at this point. Um, but they've got to get in there and work on some of that concrete and get it broken up before that they can before they can uh, load it into the into the container.
well, as you can see in this last video, they've got most of the shrimp boat put into the trailer. Uh, there's still some to be cut up. But she's quickly becoming smaller and smaller, manageable pieces. And the shrimp boat here is just about completely dead. It'll live on after it's recycled and do more steel for another product. But I just can't stop thinking about the days where this boat was working in the Gulf Coast of the United States and here in the southeastern part of uh, Georgia and what it did and the, and the livelihood that it brought uh, to the crew that, that once called this their, their vessel. Well, hey, that's about all the time we've got today. Thanks for watching the video. We'll ask you to leave us some comments. Give us a thumbs up. Most of all, I want you guys to be safe out there.